Ja. Those were the days, my friends. We thought they'd never end. However, we can continue with them. And Donald, an answer to your question. Not only did I finish fourth in the Olympics once, I finished fourth twice. <laughs> and the reason I finished fourth in the Olympics was because the night before each of those Olympic finals, I read the Bible. And the Lord said, come forth. <laughs> so I came forth. But <laughs> it is a great honor for me to be here in the Royal College of Physicians for this very important event and this important week with the launch of the importance of physical exercise in our society. My father, who was born and raised just around the corner on South William Street, would probably be turning in his grave saying, my God, how did he get to lecture or speak in the Royal College of Physicians? But I'm really, truly honored with the invitation, Dermot and Donald, thank you for the wonderful introduction. I was trying to think over the last number of weeks exactly what I could bring to the table here tonight. And in modern day society now, there is a huge amount of debate and talk on health and well being. Research tells us that physical exercise is good for us in every way. Nutrition, which Darina will speak about later on, is very important to our well-being and our health. Yet, with all the information that's out there, what do we really do about it? Generally speaking, nothing. Why? We make excuses. It's boring to participate in physical exercise. Perhaps people are just a little bit lazy. They're not motivated, or perhaps they don't understand. Well, as you may be aware, government budgets are almost completely out of control. Yet, at the same time, government policies, which this will be very much part of, are looking for new discoveries, a new way of finding out how we can deal with modern society, how we can deal with the aging population here in Ireland and around the world, as life expectancy are on the increase and increase. Governments are faced with more challenges. We're faced with more illnesses, mental illnesses, physical illnesses that have been documented in the newspapers. And in this modern age of information technology, perhaps there's an inclination where there is less physical activity taking place. When you think at the very tip of your finger, on your computer, or on your iPad, or on your iPhone, you can call for a pizza. You can call the chipper even now, and they deliver the chips. You can call to, no longer Quinsward, but Super Quinn. They're even gone too, aren't they? <laughs> but you can call the grocery store and have your foods delivered. And even in your own home with remote controls for TV, you can turn it on, you can turn it off, you can change the channels. And even nowadays, you can actually control turning the lights on and off in your house. And you can control drawing the curtains, if you wish. So this all leads to a sedentary type of behavior. Now, there are many hundreds of reports, and this is the one that's come today, about the benefits of physical exercise. And those benefits are hard to ignore. They tell us that it helps people to prevent a gain in their weight or to control their weight. It tells us the benefits of physical exercise in terms of how we burn our calories. It tells us about how we can build strength in our bodies and in our minds. To me, it's all about when it comes to health benefits and particularly nutrition and obesity, while there are many issues and complexities out there, what you put in and what you put out. The more you put in and the less you put out, the more it's going to pile on. And as the old saying is, you are what you eat. 
A healthy body is a healthy mind. Now, physical activity, they tell us, boosts our HDL, which is the good cholesterol. And it decreases the LDL, the low cholesterol. It gets rid of the bad stuff. Good physical activity increases our heart rate. It's the pump. The heart is the most important muscle in our body. And when it pumps, it keeps that blood flowing. And when that blood flows, it also stimulates our brain. And coming from an athletics background, believe me, I know what it's like when those endorphins kick in and you get the runner's high. Because you feel better. You feel relaxed. You feel more confident because of the exertion that you put your body and your mind through. Simple exercises, not those of an Olympian or a world-class sports person, but an ordinary person. It helps to build muscle strength and helps to increase our endurance. It delivers that oxygen and the nutrients provided in our foods, which Darina will talk about, straight to our muscles. It helps that cardiovascular system. And our cardiovascular system is the engine room, the heart and the lungs. And when you work the heart and the lungs efficiently, by means of moving your body in particular ways to get that heart rate up, all of a sudden, after a while, you begin to work more efficiently. And those difficult tasks, all of a sudden, become easier tasks. They say physical exercise helps us to sleep better. It helps us with our sex life, believe it or not. It can be fun, not just the sex life, but the exercise. It can be enjoyable, and you can have a better outlook on life in general when you participate in quality, controlled exercise. Socially, it's excellent. You meet new friends, whether it's walking, whether it's running, whether it's swimming, whether it's dancing, whether it's cycling, whether it's climbing hills. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it gets that engine room working and the body working too. Because in the course of physical exercise, you really need to test yourself. You really need to get that body working. You need to test your heart and you really need to test your soul. And the attitude you have to have is to become a warrior. Not an Olympic warrior, but a human warrior because you're putting yourself through the effort of physical exercise. Now, research also tells us of the decrease in physical exercise. We know about the obesity epidemic. It's frightening, the statistics, which I won't go into, that lie ahead. Research also tells us about the increase in mental issues our society is facing and the importance of physical exercise, how they can help these various issues, whether it's depression, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, just to name a few. There are many, many, many challenges facing the elderly and the government are under huge pressure in terms of increasing the spend in our health budgets. But it's time, I believe, that we don't blame others, that we take personal responsibility for our own well-being. To me, exercise is medicine. So you're sick, you go to your local GP, he asks you a few questions, and he will write you a prescription for the appropriate medication to take care of the illness. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the doctor prescribed a physical exercise plan. To me, prevention is better than cure. And that's why, as an athlete, we work really hard in preventing injuries coming on. And could you imagine 
in the course of a doctor's training that perhaps he or she might even, it might be even included in their training program to take on the roles of becoming a sports coach to get their accreditation, whereby when a patient went to the doctor, he or she will be able to identify the illness, identify the injury, and recommend a regime of physical exercise. I think that would be amazing, as opposed to just prescribing drugs. Now, my sports journey, look at me. Would you believe that is exactly 50 years ago? I was only two. <laughs> but over those 50 years plus, by God, I learned an awful lot as an Olympian, world champion, world record holder. And believe me, it wasn't easy. I had my ups, I had my downs. But during the course of those 50 plus years, I was provided the tools, the physical tools and the mental tools to be able to deliver at a high performance rate. I learned what the ingredients, the ingredients for success are. I trained 100 miles a week just to run and race one mile fast. 100 miles a week. And in that, it took a lot of discipline, determination, dedication, but more importantly, self-belief. A lot of self-belief. Now, the ingredients are no different than Dorina's baking a cake. She plans, sets her goal. She identifies the ingredients. She puts them together one by one in appropriate order. And she puts it in the oven. And Eureka, after an hour or a half, whatever it might be, the cake comes out of the oven perfectly cooked and it's the same as an athlete preparing to compete at world-class level we identify our goal it might be one year away we work backwards nine months away six months away or should I say right to the present day we identify our goal and then the plan the roadmap thereafter is Starting from today, for that journey one year away, we know where we want to be next month, the following month, the end of the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter. But we don't get carried away with ourselves, trying to do too much too soon and burn the cake. We plan very carefully. And part of the ingredients is the clock. Routine, routine, routine. The great Jumbo Elliott in Villanova University in Pennsylvania, where Ronnie Delaney, Ireland's last Olympic gold medal on the track, and I went to school, and Sonia went to school, used to say, routine, routine, routine. G -g 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 I'm Irishman. I want you to get up at the same time. I want you to train at the same time. I want you to go to school at the same time. I want you to study at the same time. I will want you to eat at the same time. And God damn it, I want you to go to the loo at the same time. Routine in terms of applying yourself to physical regime is very important. Part of the ingredients, which is perhaps the strongest part, is your strength work, your foundation work, putting in the miles, putting in the miles. As I said, 100 miles a week. The other components of your miles is working on the hills, the resistance. Oh, I hate going up that hill. It kills me. The weight training that you would do, all that resistance helps you then to be much faster. And some people say, how can I run faster? And I would say, learn to run as long as you can for as slow as you can. And once you learn to increase that slowness from five minutes without stopping to 10 minutes without stopping to an hour without stopping, just imagine how fast you can then run for five minutes because of the foundation that has been established. Another important part of our ingredients is our nutrition. And Arena will talk about nutrition. Gone are the days when I used to take a can of Coke and a Mars bar on my way to training <laughs> for a boost of energy. 
Science has changed in sports, and science has changed in everyday living with regards to the products that are out there. We had to learn about our percentage of carbos, our percentage of proteins, and our percentages of fats. And to get all of those right in order to reach peak performance. So your nutrition is so much part of peak performance. Not just for an elite athlete, but for all of us. And hydration. If your car runs out of water, it's going to overheat and it's going to blow. It's the same with the body, getting the right amount of hydration. Sleep, very important. And all that went into twice a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks of the year. But in order to maintain that concentration, you had to be highly motivated. Now, we all have dreams. Dreams versus reality. You dream you want to become an Olympian or an Olympic champion. The reality of getting there is quite different, a lot different. You start off motivated the first week on a diet plan, on a fitness regime, and after a week, oh God, the reality of this is so different. So you've got to get the balance right. You've got to understand the stress, the physical stress that you're going to be going through. You've got to really welcome that stress because your body adapts to it and gets stronger and stronger. Some people use the stress and the difficulty as a reason to quit. Ah, it's too hard, I won't do it. But you've got to visualize the outcome. The one area that I found helpful in keeping that dream a reality and my motivational tool is my diary. Monday morning, 8 a.m., five miles, wet or bad. Monday afternoon, 10 miles. Tuesday, five. Afternoon, 10 by 1,500. Whatever it is. You total up at the end of the week and you go, wow, I'm really doing good. You total up at the end of the month, wow, I'm really doing good. You can see the pitfalls and you can see what's really working for you. Because when you work out and you don't record it, you kind of forget what you've done. But when you see what you've done, ah, you're inspired to do it. Not do more, but follow that roadmap. Another important part of the helping that dream to be maintain realism is the buddy system. When I go training on my own all those years, I'd be thinking about, oh, I feel crap, oh, God. But all of a sudden, somebody will join me. And I'm running along, and we're chatting and chatting, and you forget how bad you feel. All of a sudden, you feel great. So when you adopt a physical exercise regime, important to have the buddy system. Someone that's depending on you, and you're depending on them. You agree to meet, and it makes it so much easier and keeps you motivated. But the key is to be patient. Be patient. Don't look for too much too soon. People are looking for results in a week or two or three. No, be patient. Keep the diary. And all of a sudden, it'll come to you without you even noticing it. You have to adopt the athlete's mentality. You have to adopt it. You're not training for the Olympics, but you have to that, have that mentality. Now, in conclusion, there's an old saying, as you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That might be true. Well, I'll tell you one thing. My... Father-in-law is 85 years of age, and 10 years ago, he, was a f he, he never swam a stroke in his life. As a matter of, foot, of fact, he'd be afraid to put his foot into the pool, get his toe wet. Jim, you've always dreamed about trying to learn to swim. So we got him with a coach. We teach him how not to be afraid of the water. And do you know what? At 85 years of age, 10 years on, he loves swimming. He absolutely eats it up. Why? Because it's never, ever, ever, ever too late, no matter what you want to do when it comes to physical activity. There's always going to be a challenge there. And as you get older and you start saying, oh, I'm getting too old to be going for walks or climbing this or going on that or doing the other. No, 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 no. What you say is, this is a new challenge in my life at this stage. So make it exciting for yourself. Welcome the toughness that you're going to endure. Just take it on board because you'll be amazed, absolutely amazed by the outcome. And what you'll find, just like Jim, the father-in-law, his confidence and your confidence will grow enormously. 
You'll be walking around the street. Your head will be up. Your chest will be out. Why? Because of what I said earlier about the oxygen and the nutrients and the endorphins going through your body and into your brain. It's just incredible. And the end result is you will become a winner. Not trying to beat somebody else in a race, but you'll be winning for yourself and yourself only. And I always like to say to people, if your car's broken down, you'll go in and you get it fixed. If your body's broken down, you'll go into a doctor. To maintain your car, you'll put the water in, you'll check the wipers, you'll check the lights, and you'll keep maintaining it. And it's the same with the human body and the human mind. But what you have to realize is, it's your time, and your time only. And if you make an excuse that you don't have the time, you're letting yourself down. Because it's all about you, and it's you only that can make a difference to yourself. And it's you only where physical exercise and participation in physical activity can make a huge difference to yourself. Thank you very much.